G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, and I'm happy to announce that today's video is made in collaboration with NordVPN, the world's leading VPN provider. What is a VPN, you ask? Well, a VPN gives you privacy and anonymity by giving you a private network on a public internet connection. VPN services establish a secure and encrypted connection to provide greater privacy than even a secured Wi-Fi hotspot. So why would you need a VPN? Well, there's quite a few benefits. First of all, you can find streaming platforms at a lower price, and also if a streaming platform just isn't available in your country, you can simply change your virtual location and use it. For instance, if you're bored of the Australian Netflix, you can simply connect to your VPN, go to the UK or America or something like that, you can see their version of Netflix. Or if you're traveling, you can stay at home virtually through the VPN. If you're an avid gamer, some video games aren't available in every country, some are geo-blocked, so you can simply use the VPN and get access to them. The great thing about NordVPN is that you get over 5,300 different servers across 59 countries. Not only that, it is the fastest VPN VPN available. NordVPN service is really easy to use. You can use one-click connection or you can even set up auto connection. And you don't have to worry about bandwidth throttling. NordVPN actually encrypts all your traffic so you don't have to worry about your internet provider slowing down your streaming speed. And the other cool thing about it is you get to use up to six devices across all major platforms. But the exciting news I have for you today is through TrueFooty, you can actually get up to 70% of a discount on the NordVPN service. All you have to do is go to nordvpn.com forward slash TrueFooty and use the coupon code TRUEFOOTY. But if you go to that URL, it will automatically apply the discount for you. If you don't have a pen and paper, that's okay. You can simply go to the description of this video and find the URL there and use your code. Thanks for watching guys and enjoy the video. G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel today. I am going to be following the steps of Papa Caden McDonald. We're bringing back the tier makers. You may have seen in the last week that he did a tier maker ranking all the best key forwards in the game. Well, today I'm going to be running off that model and taking a look at the elite midfielders in the competition and ranking them into tiers. Yes, you may have thought the tier makers were dead, but you know, when Caden McDonald does a video, the rest of us go, hmm, should we do that? Personally, I think tier makers are a lot of fun and they're still relevant so long as you're talking about a topic that is still fresh. I mean, we're talking about the 2021 midfielders and ranking them into tiers. That's going to be very different to 2020 or even 2019. So we're going to be taking a look at what I think is the, around about the top 40 midfielders. I don't know if it's strictly the top 40, but it looks like there's a few from each team and we're going to be ranking them into tiers. So as you can see, these are already some of the best midfielders in the game. So there's no spuds on this list. And if you look at the tiers, we've got the GOAT tier. We've got top notch, elite, very good and good because frankly, all these players are really good players. It's just about separating them into tiers and, and seeing like who are the actual benchmark mids and who are just good midfielders. Running my eye over the list down the bottom, it looks like they're all pretty good mids. So I'm pretty happy with that. So if you remember what I like to do with tier makers is kind of set the standard with the best and may maybe not the worst, but you know, the lowest tier first and then fill in the gaps in between. So in terms of GOAT midfielders, there's probably only two or three. You got to start with Dusty Martin for obvious reasons three Norm Smith potentially could win the Brownlow again this year I don't really know how to predict that because there's a few good contenders including Christian Petrarca as well uh, and Dusty is obviously missing this week against the Bulldogs with concussion but uh, I don't think I really need to make a strong argument for Dusty and I won't have time to go through all of these players one by one and make a case for them um, I'm simply going to do it pretty much off the bat the other goat mid I would say is Nat Fife um, two Brownlow speaks for it all um, and then looking at the list, who's probably the bottom tier? Um, Hugh Greenwood stands out. I think he's, you know, a decent midfielder. I don't think anyone really, really make the argument that he's very good. But again, it's hard to say that straight off the bat. You need to look at who's in each tier and then we'll sort of, we'll reconfigure it as we go. So I'll try and sort of find one for each category and then we can fill it in as we go. So a top-notch midfielder, someone who's down from GOAT. Um, I'm thinking your Bonts. For instance, where's Bont? Yeah, Bont. So uh, he's not GOAT because he doesn't quite have the legacy of, you know, your Dusty and Fives. Um, I think that's fair to say. But, you know, arguably the best player in the comp right now, if you ask me, I think he's right up there with anyone. Um, another one that comes to mind is Christian Petrarca. You know, he's setting the, the pace in terms of, you know, maybe he's on Brownlow pace at the moment. Uh, definitely one of the best plays in the comp, let alone mids. Someone that sort of catches my eye as a very good midfielder, maybe Tim Taranto. Obviously a very young player, which people forget because he's such a good midfielder at such a young age. Uh, I think he goes into very good. And then who would be elite? Or oh, I might even chuck Paddy Cripps in there. Has he kind of dropped off from top notch? I think that's fair to say. I think you have to include a bit of current form in this. And although his legacy is solid, he hasn't won a Brownlow yet. He's come close. Um, and I think he will win one. Uh, right now, I think he's just dropped down to elite. All right, I'm going to start whacking some guys generally into... Oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> 
I'm gonna start throwing some guys into categories and then yeah, reconfigure it if I feel the need to change. So Taylor Adams, straight off the bat, I'm thinking Elite or Travi Boak. Let's put him in Elite for now, but second in the Brownlow last year, pretty close to top notch. Andrew Brayshaw, very good. Um, he's having a breakout year as, uh, as one of Fremantle's best mids. I don't know if he's considered elite category. I don't think I'd have him on the Taylor Adams level. I think that's fair to say. Danger, ah, oh, this is a tough one where I want to put him in GOAT because he has a brown low, nearly won a couple of other ones. I think he's kind of runner up to Dusty and Fife in their respective years. I'm going to put him in GOAT. I'm a big fan. Uh, I know he probably hasn't put it together the last year or two, but uh, it's, it's a tough one with players who may, might be a little bit over the hill as well. And Danger seems to have slowed down more than the other two. Stephen Cornelio has form slumped his way down into a very good. Uh, I think he's definitely elite, maybe top notch on his day, probably probably more elite than anything. Uh, but current form hasn't warranted, and it's been over a year now, so I think very good is fair. I'm gonna chuck Seb Ross in the good category, uh, probably better than Hugh Greenwood. I think he's a decent midfielder, but probably below the levels of you know your Cornelio Taranto Brayshaw personally. Lockie Neal, here we go, top notch. Yeah, I think that speaks for himself. Reigning Brownlow medalist, a bit underdone this year. Uh, definitely not a GOAT, but I think he's up there with the other two mids I've put there. Scott Pendlebury, I put in Elite. Again, probably probably warrants top notch at his absolute peak. I think it's fair to say that he's a level below your Niels, Petrarcas, and Bonds. Trent Cochin, I'm going to put in Good. Now, this is a guy with a great reputation, and I do love him. I think he seems like a good bloke, but look at his stats. Not very compelling for a midfielder. He's an impact player. He's very good when he gets the ball, but he's averaging less than 20 posies this year, and... You know, that's kind of standard for him. I know he's won a Brownlow, so it's kind of weird putting a Brownlow medalist in this good section. But uh, I think, you know, considering where he's at at the moment, I think he's more on this level than anyone else. Cunnington's very good. That's fair to say. Very consistent midfielder. Some people will say elite. Maybe he did reach an elite level for a couple of years there, but, uh, you know, not consistently as the guys above him. Jack Steele catches my eye. I think it's fair to say he's a top-notch midfielder. Yeah, he'd be uh, an All-Australian mid at the moment without too many questions asked, so... I think, he's, I think he warrants that. Now, Josh P. Kennedy is a tough one. On Legacy, you'd probably have him top notch. But on current form, he's probably more elite, would you say? I think he had 42 posies or something on the weekend and his team's loss. And yeah, not quite the player he once was. But yeah, I'd say at his peak top notch and then maybe a bit down. Maybe there's a double standard there because I just did the opposite for Danger, but who cares? Tim Kelly, I'd probably put as elite. I think he's probably around this level, um, particularly on his day. It's a tough one. I mean, I'm not saying he's as good as every other player in that list. I think he really thrives as like being the third midfielder. I think as the number one mid, um, he's not quite up to the level of certainly the guys above. So I'll put him in elite for now. Mm, Jack McRae's a tough one. Do I go elite or very good? I think he is somewhere between those two. Uh, we'll put him in elite for now. He's a very good player. Zachy Merritt, elite, similar to McRae, ultra consistent, super productive, heaps of possessions. Not quite top notch, but you know, very good player. Elite, you might say. David Mundy's a tough one. Um, arguably leading the Brownlow count at the moment. I wouldn't say top notch. He's a, it's a tough one to gauge. I'll put him in elite for now. It's, it's a tough one to gauge with Mundy because he was probably sheltered from a pure midfield role for a few years there while Fremantle getting games into the kids and now he's getting more more of an opportunity in the guts and he's showing like he's as good as ever. He's, he's free man on Scott Pendlebury in a lot of ways. So he's probably been, you know, better than some of the mids I've got in top notch, but uh, I think I think that's where I'll put him for now. Clayton Oliver, whoo. Oh. Jeez, there's a lot of elite mids, isn't there? I'm gonna have to start padding out. I'm gonna say he's elite, he's top three mid in the comp for possessions. Kind of butchers it at times. I'm more inclined to say very good than elite, actually, to be honest. Um, but he's also young, he's also young, so. I think he could be a top-notch midfielder on his day, but he's still only like 23, I think, Clayton Oliver. So, yeah, we'll see. Joey Gomira, very good. I know I can hear Dom watching this and going, he's elite, but uh, I don't know. He, his stats are very good, but impact per position is not quite on the level of some of the guys ahead of him. You know, he, he's probably knocking on the door of elite, but I, I don't know if I see it personally. Luke Parker, elite. Um, I'm going to start skipping ahead to some guys that are not going to pad out this elite section too much because after all, this is a list of some of the more elite mids in the comp. Rory Sloan, probably a little bit off his peak these days. I'd say he's a very good midfielder. Joel Selwood, ooh, he's putting together a very good season, actually. Do I go very good? Is that too harsh? Obviously, on Legacy, he's top notch, but he's close to elite, isn't he? Chuck him in elite for now. Gee, Prestia is elite. Shuey's elite. Bailey Smith also very good. I think that's fair. I don't think his outputs are consistent enough to be above that. But again, was he like 22? Uh, if that, 21? He's going to be a fantastic player. Tom Mitchell. I find Mitchell hard to grade because I've sort of downplayed his impact in the past. Oh, Hawks fans are going to hate me. I think he's a very good midfielder. That's about as far as I put it, to be honest. 
you know, 40 touches from Tom Mitchell isn't as good as, you know, some other players. And I'll, I'll say the same for Trelaw. He's having a good season as, a, you know, the Bulldogs' bloody fourth or fifth midfielder, which is ridiculous because uh, of how stacked that midfield is. And he is a very good player. But uh, again, that's probably, I, I think if his ball use was more damaging, um, I'd probably have him higher. Sammy Walsh, oh, he's probably elite in terms of this year's form. I think that's fair to say. Oli Wan's very good. James Warple, very good. Mm, Elliot Yo, again, am I biased? I'm going to say Elliot Yo's elite, to be honest. I think I think he's a barometer player for the Eagles. If you look at 2020, when we started playing well, it was because he was winning the contested ball, which is something we really lack. He won back-to-back -back club champions, or best and fairest, whatever you want to call them, including in our premiership year. So uh, actually an underrated player, and I think he's probably better than Tim Kelly, personally. Dylan Shield, I think, is a good midfielder. Is that harsh? Maybe. I think he's a good midfielder. That's about as far as I'd put it. Gets a lot of the ball, not super damaging. Like, not a player you'd, you'd turn your nose down at, but uh, probably, I mean, he's better than Greenwood, but he's probably on a Seb Ross level for me. Josh Dunkley, very good as well. High production, not quite as good as the guys above him, I think that's fair to say. Cam Guthrie, probably very good, um, based on uh, an All-Australian year last year as a midfielder. He's really broken out. He's, he's, I don't think he's reached that elite level because he hasn't done it for long enough, but he is also a very good player. I, I think he might struggle to make the All-Australian midfield this year. Uh, I think he's going to be competitive, but um, you know he's going to be around the mark. Josh Kelly, ugh, tough one. I want to say very good. I don't think he's hit, hit the elite level by any means. I was more considering good or very good for Josh Kelly. That's a tough one. I think he has the potential to be top notch, but uh, just hasn't quite put his potential together. And he's getting to that age where, well, what is he like, 26 this year, I think. So it's kind of time time to start delivering on that promise. You'd still you'd still be very happy to take him in your team, but um, yeah, not elite for me. Uh, Jared Lyons, finally, uh, I think he's a good midfielder. I think that's fair to say. Uh, contested, oriented. Um, not super damaging, but also just like a very, very important cog in that Brisbane midfield. Uh, I think good is fair. So there you have it, guys. That is the list I've got. I've got Dusty Danger and Fife as my top three. Um, I've always been a big fan of those three. And the next top-notch mids that separate them from the best are Bontempelli, Petrarca, Neil, and Steele. And then you have a glut of these elite midfielders, in my opinion. I don't know. Upon reflection, if I would change anything, some of the contenders to come down out of elite would probably be Joel Selwood. Gee, it's hard to pick someone to come out of that side, but in the in the very goods, some players that I'd probably be tempted to elevate would be Clayton Oliver, Tommy Mitchell, maybe. No, overall, I think I think I'm fairly happy with that, guys. I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments uh, below as well. What you think I got what right and what I think I got wrong. And also let me know if you enjoyed this tier maker style video, because uh, frankly, I think they're good fun. Uh, they're pretty easy to whip up, and it's a good way of sort of getting like that analysis with like a good visual aid as well so um yeah anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel and i'll see you in the next one cheers